Hey guys, I'm back and I have two special guests today who are hopefully going to help you take your meetings to a whole new level. These guys are in presentations, they're in all kinds of productions and they're helping customers adopt and embrace Microsoft 365 technology. So without any further ado, let me bring them up here. Let me introduce you to, no surprise, Hugo and his uh, knight in shining armor. David Warner. <laughs> Guys, would you just hey. take a moment to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Hugo Bernier. I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft uh, during the day. But at night, I'm a, I'm a member of the Patterns and Practices team. And I, I help run events called Sharing is Caring with my friend David, who's like this way. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Hugo. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, my name is David Warner. I uh, work for Catapult Systems, MVP by day as well, and love working with the community all day, every day. Uh, again, couldn't do it without Hugo and the support of the rest of the team, April and Emily and Louisa and so many more. Uh, so excited to be here. Thank Denzel, thanks for having us. Awesome. This is great. Now, I've watched you both in action, and it is so engaging to watch you guys, you know, present and I think a lot of it comes from not only just the content that's engaging but also the style of presentation so I've seen you both use two different tools and work very differently in your presentation so so perhaps I could start uh, with David first so David I've seen you share PowerPoint and I've seen you draw like Picasso all over and so I was wondering if you could perhaps you know walk us through uh, you know a sample of how you present uh, and, and how is it that you're drawing symbols and, and writing and, and zooming into things and making it really interesting to learn? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me share my screen here and we'll start with where you can get the tool from. Uh, it's actually called Zoomit. It is a Microsoft tool. Uh, you can go to aka.ms forward slash Zoomit to download it. It will take you directly uh, to this URL right here. Uh, that you see that's long and probably not going to be remembered. Uh, but if you go to aka.ms forward slash zoom it, you download it. It is a free tool. You install it. Uh, it'll go down into your system tray uh, right down here. And so you can open up uh, zoom it. <clears throat> to see what options are available. Um, and it's triggered by uh, keystrokes, right? So for example, you can access the ability to zoom into your screen, which I'll show you in a moment with control one. You can control the magnification that you zoom in on. Uh, you can also live zoom, which allows you to move around while you're zoomed in. And you can draw. The drawing is really some of the most uh, powerful parts because uh, when you're on a big palette like this or a big canvas and you say, as you can see here, they may or may not be able to see your cursor. And there's a tool actually that you can do to make it a little more apparent Hugo is going to show you uh, but it's not always just right front and center and so some color some arrows some drawing some text on the screen definitely goes a long way to help you do that um, now you'll notice as I uh, look, show right here on control 2 I'm highlighting it and it won't actually let me lose zoom it while I'm in the zoom it options uh, but it's using control 2 or the control keystrokes one of the cool things you could also do is you could map it to for example a stream deck button or if you have a Corsair keyboard with uh, a G key on it, for example. Uh, I can zoom in here and I can point out some details. So now instead of having to hit control there one or again control two. His, uh... <laughs> yeah. I, I love and that. So you, you, know what? you make me want to, I, I want to put you on the spot. You, you seem to be so good at this. Okay. Yeah. So I was wondering, you, 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 thanks for that explanation on Zoom in and, and thanks for letting us know about the zooming tools. Uh, before we go any further, guys, if you both have music mode, feel free to turn it on. Uh, you know, we should be able to capture that sound in this uh, on, on this uh, call here as well. So I'd love for you to go to one of uh, a web page and I'm going to ask and I'm going to try and ask you to draw on it <laughs> in, 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 at my command. So perhaps you got a web. OK, okay. I like this web page. Sharing is right. caring. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is perhaps uh, show me if you can just give me a, a square box around uh, P and P, the the mascot that's there. Yep, Parker. No a... Oh no, Parker. Oh, oh Parker. Parker. Yeah, let's yep. get on Parker. Okay, that was easy. Okay, how about some arrows pointing towards sharing and a few arrows pointing towards caring. And then if you have <laughs> uh, any more in you, how about a underline, <laughs> underline all of that text. All right. Okay. That that's impressive. What if I want to just start typing text and say this is the part I need to focus on? What would I do then? Yep. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I can hit T and you can just start typing. Uh, Denzel rocks, right? Uh, you can hit control <laughs> up and down to increase if you want to. And as you can see, I can still move around. So now I can say Hugo rocks. And now Hugo's, of course, going to say, well, why I is rock, you know, why I am I rock bigger? More. He rocks more, yeah. right? Um, and of course, you can also control Z. That's one of the cool things. So if you're going through, you could hit escape to just clear the palette. Uh, but if you just want to go back one, you can hit control Z just to continue to go back one and you can see i'm slowly taking off everything nice. as i go uh, or hit escape so those changes were not made live to the web page right because i think uh a few people might be <laughs> exactly no no making any changes i'm able to scroll down and say for example you wanted to join in on a sharing is caring ama i wanted to draw attention to it uh, mm -hmm. i can absolutely hit my control one or in this case i'm using my g key i can zoom in and you can also move around right so once you you're zoomed in start drawing on on top of that zoom Yep, so I'm zoomed in. I clicked my mouse button to lock the zoom. I'm going to yeah. change back to my favorite color, orange, and now I'm able to say, it, come in on November 30th to learn about Microsoft Graph Toolkit. I can add more arrows. Uh, I can circle it if I want. I can draw a circle around it that's a little more perfect <laughs> ellipse, right? And I can change the colors, a uh, certain amount of palette, but lots of tools here to help draw Amazing. attention to exactly what you're looking at. David, you are the king of zoom it. I think I'm just going to call it <laughs> David it. Uh, from uh, now on. Learn from great uh, other ones in the community like Vesa. <laughs> he uses it quite a bit. Awesome. So Thanks what are some sharing. of the shortcut keys, uh, David? Uh, shortcut keys. So you control one was to zoom in. Control one. Uh, you click yeah. your mouse button and it kind of locks the, the view there. Um, and then you hit control shift to create an arrow, right? Uh, if you just want to draw, you don't need anything. You can just draw with your mouse button. Uh, if you want to type, then you can type uh, the T key just and that'll invoke the typing option so you can say typing here right um, mm -hmm. and then if you want to type again somewhere else you just click once it gives you back that crosshair you hit t again and again let's say i want it to be a little bigger uh, so i can hit control up to get a bigger font uh, and i can say bigger right and now it's there and uh and so then i can um, do a circle if i wanted by using the tab button so you hold down tab and you drag and you uh, hold down tab and, and click your mouse button and drag, and then you're able to make that. Um, same with the uh, square. So you hold down the control button and you're able to square. So I can control Z back out if I wanna clear the palette and do that and do that. And of course you can just change the colors as well. There's five or six primary colors. So you hit the first letter of that primary color. So for example, if I wanted to do B, I hit blue, or if I want to do blue, I hit B. If I want to do red, I hit R, green, G, uh, pink, right? And of course, <laughs> orange, O, right? So you can get a decent little rainbow there, collection of Skittles. Amazing. Uh, you know, and I can see, you know, this not only helping folks maybe who do training or coaching for, type of work, some of the work that you guys do, but it can also help folks in sales, people who are doing presentations and maybe just walking a customer through a PowerPoint. It seems like you can annotate right over your screen while you're presenting as well. So really cool features for folks and everyone to try. And here's yep, a cool absolutely. tip, um, by the way, when you're in draw mode, uh, so you get to that by hitting control two, right, uh, David? Yeah, if you don't want to zoom in, you can just hit control yeah. two and that will give you your crosshairs. But while you're in draw mode, you can actually hit W to get a whiteboard. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So if you want a full white space to do that mm -hmm. and draw some pictures, which I'm not yet good at uh, in terms of drawing, and then you just hit escape and you come right back out. Um, and again, the control X, control you know one, control two, control three, etc., may be foreign to you. You may not be comfortable. Uh, you can map it to a single key function, again, through things like um, the Elgato Stream Deck software. So I have a Corsair keyboard that has the G key on it. I was able to map it as you saw. So now I just hit G1 and bam, I'm able to now zoom in uh, and affect the same thing with one keystroke. Hit escape and I just zoom back out. I have six MTG keys that are about to get, <laughs> you know, I, and I later with m mappings. So let me uh, put that G key to use. So thank you so much. That was a great, amazing tip. And again, folks, this is great during a screen share. So if you are sharing your screen, uh, you are drawing on that screen so that other folks can see that. Hugo, you're up next. Now I heard 
uh, you have like the ultralist wide monitor in the world, <laughs> and and then everyone joining your session seems to look at things really tiny on their end. But you've come up with some creative ways to make it much more engaging for them to look at that content. Yes, uh, so I'm surrounded with monitors. There's like <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, uh, five monitors around me, and uh, two of which are like super widescreen, ultra wide. Um, so, and those are the primary ones that I use because if I actually work beyond those two monitors, I'm getting <laughs> myself, uh, I'm straining my neck. Uh, but here's the problem, right? So if I'm presenting and I share my screen, I'm going to share my screen. You're going to see. Uh, I always reserve one screen for presenting and one screen for my presentation notes and you know looking at the audience and things like that. So if I share my screen, you're going to see that um, nice well, ultra right now, wide. <laughs> it's pretty wide, right? And the problem is, you can't impose that on on people who are looking at your presentation because maybe they're looking at it on a tiny little laptop. Maybe they have an ultra wide, but not everybody does. So. Here's the problem: is that I, for the longest time, I used to have my monitor set up. Uh, the one that I use for presenting, I always had it on uh, the lowest resolution I could I could do without, you know, hating myself for buying such a big monitor. Uh, but I would always forget it on the lowest resolution possible. And then once in a while, I'd say, "Oh, you know what? Why don't I switch to the biggest resolution so I can actually work? Because I'm not presenting." And then it would be a really a pain in the butt to switch between resolutions. So I found this tool. It's actually a tool that you can uh, download. It's free, although you can uh, you can buy uh, you can buy it. And don't worry, I will use the fancy zoom it to show you how it works. But the tool is called Display Changer. Yes, uh, we can barely see that. So uh, just, yeah, you know, <laughs> look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There There's the zoom in. Okay, that helps. Just yeah, yeah, and I'll I'll show you how to switch in a moment. So, uh, but the tool is called Display Changer 2. It's uh it's op uh, it's kind of like a freeware. You can buy a a, a premium version of it if you want to, uh, and uh, you can find it that the URL here is 12noon.com. Um, you know, sh uh, shout out to them because they're doing a really cool tool. But there is a tool that you can buy now. If I zoom in right here, there's a tool that you can buy for, or not buy, you can download for Windows 10 and above. Uh, and that's what I did. I downloaded Display Changer 2, and I'm going to switch to my command prompt here. I've tried to, I'll try to zoom in a little bit here, my command prompt, so you can see. Um, oops. See, I'm not an ex I'm not a pro like David at this. David, that's the Control 4 that I'd be using, right? There you go. Control four. There Isn't you go. Why you guys tag team your presentations? That's why. That's why we somebody, tag team. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, I hold the shift. He holds the control. Um, all right. So, <laughs> with this display changer, uh, once you have it installed, what you do is you configure your your computer or your monitors the way you want them to work. So in this case, this is my work mode here, right? So what I do, what I'll do is I'll call a uh, display changer, and I'll say create. And then I'll pass it a path. So in this case, I'm I'm saving something on my C, uh, D temp, and I'm calling it work mode .xml. I do that. It doesn't really do anything. It just you know says well, it says nothing. And so the nothing here means we're good. All right. So now I'm going to go out of Zoom. If I if I remember how to do that, and I'm going to go change the resolution of my computer so that I can actually present in a more decent way so that people don't get nosebleeds when they're looking at my presentation. So I'm going to go. My... I've already like gone three, four clicks in just to get here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's okay. And if you're stressing about it, uh, so what we recommend is always use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which I think is uh, 1920 by 1080. Yep. Uh, right. So now what I do is I will actually do the same thing. I'll do a DC create, DC2 create, and I'll say demo mode. And what this will do is we'll now remember that uh, on the demo mode.xml, these are the settings that I want. I want my mm -hmm. ultra wide on one side at full resolution, my other ultra wide at presentation resolution. And now the one of those commands have created a configuration 
that has the current display resolutions running on all monitors on your desktop. Correct? That's is that... correct. Okay. So now if I want to go back to my work, I would just need to type DC uh, to configure and pass the XML file. So it will restore it back. See, I just did DC, uh, DC to configure uh, work mode and then DC to configure demo mode. It switches me back and forth between nice. my resolution that I can present at and the resolution that I can work with. Um, and I can have as many configurations as I want. So if I wanted to have, you know, c configure all my, my monitors to be different, I could do that as well. Now, here's the problem though. Typing DC2 configure, blah, 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 it's kind of a pain. And that's why what I've done is if I share my, my stream deck, I actually associated a button for uh, demo mode and work mode. Now I'm not too fancy when it comes to icons, so I just kind of use the See, exact I notice those icons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe David, uh, can you draw a circle around those icons? <laughs> Here, let me see. Let me see if I can emulate my uh, my inner David. Uh, ooh, there you go. Look at that. Okay. Uh, so, and what I've done is uh, I've just created a little batch file that actually goes into my display changer mode and just calls the exact command that I that I want to. So that way, all I need to do is I can switch and it's not going to show, you're not going to see me switch, or click the switch on it. But if I switch between uh, work mode and display mode, it automatically switches back and forth. Nice. So, so you that's... map those buttons to your Stream Deck. Now, for folks who don't have Stream Decks, uh, an alternative would be a shortcut, perhaps. Yeah, you could actually drag and drop a shortcut key, uh, a shortcut on your on your toolbar. Taskbar, you just click you know, it, yeah, yeah, and switch it on the fly. Exactly. Now I'm gonna stay in demo mode because I want to show you another little tip that I use. Uh, and and I, before I... uh, you can do that, can you just perhaps open up that same web page we were looking at earlier? I think it was the blue one. Uh, and you were switching it and initially when you started this off, you know, it was a lot of blue space on either side. So. Yeah. I had to move yeah. my head all the way from yeah. left to right. <laughs> yeah. to, to see so it. there you go. So that's a good one. So if you guys, if you're watching, like you could totally see that change. Uh, no flicker, uh, no frills. <laughs> you, you just run that and it fits the frame perfectly. And it's much more legible for me to read. I'm not sure David, if he needs uh, any more further zooming in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks great. Now you get that at 12 noon. I think I went to buy it at 12:30 and missed out. So I'll try <laughs> again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's only available one time in the day. <laughs> yeah. um, so the other the other thing that I and David kind of mentions it a little bit how he's like a pro at using Zoom it uh, and drawing and stuff of like that. And if you've ever seen him present, like it's just natural to him. The one thing that I've tried to to do is I try to teach myself every time I say, as you can see here, or every time I say the word here, we have to remember that you know where you're looking at when you're presenting, but your audience doesn't know. And unfortunately, moving your mouse like a mad person um, doesn't work because, you know, as we know, teams sometimes will drop the frame rate down to three frames per second if it can save the, the, the frames per second. So you moving the mouse like this and saying, as you can see here, that's not going to work, right? So one of the tips that I do is if I want to say to someone, okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go look at the community calls. Uh, you know, I'm going to go here. I actually, of course, now because I'm trying to do it, it's not going to work. It's not working. <laughs> Fine. All right, I'm done with my presentation. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's, is that the is that the part where you would cl click Control twice in Windows and you yes. can get that? You get that, uh, but I think there's that, is that is that a feature Maybe. of uh, Windows natively, or is that a power toy? From, no, it's uh, actually a feature of power toy, and I just re restarted power toy, so it should work now. There you go. Okay, oh yeah, so, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So let me show you where I got it, and then I'll show you how it works. But if you go to, uh, you look for power toys. Uh, it's a it's a Microsoft tool. It's a free tool. And you install the executable. It's got tons of options, and I'll show you all the options that are available. You know, there's lots of really fun uh, options. Color picker is one that I love to, do, but we'll talk about that one later. But one of the ones that I love is the mouse utilities. 
and it allows you to enable Find My Mouse. And then, oh, it says don't activate when you play a game. Well, I don't play games on this computer. But um, now that I have this enabled, and I enabled it by clicking here, it actually allows me to kind of follow my mouse, right? You can see I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And then if you click your mouse again, it will release. Or if you hit Control again, uh, it should it should release as well. So this is awesome. a great That's way. That's a great tip, yeah. And it just associate it yourself. Like uh, if I say here, I click here, right? Here. Come on. It's not working now because I just shut it down. Yeah. There you go. Here. <laughs> Um, so that's, those are my two tips. Uh, are, are after you today. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, hey, well. yeah. You, well, you had us with the display change. And so that was really impressive, especially a lot of folks, you know, have recently acquired larger displays. People are working from home. And so they've taken a lot more freedom in how they outfit their workspaces. And having more than one monitor is becoming more normal. And the second monitor being even wider than the primary is also much more normal. So a lot of folks have these struggles and they need to share content. So hopefully these tips kind of help them out with sharing their ultra wide displays and making it easier for participants to be engaged because the content is right there and easy for them to find it accessible. Now, uh, yeah, definitely. Now these are some great tips and I'm wondering how I could take this uh, to a whole new level. So, uh, I'm not sure what I could do from here, but if I have learned anything, uh, you, you could stop screen sharing so so we can get you back uh, out of your, uh, your... And you could go back to your ultra-wide display, your resolution. Thank so, you. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> as you were, as you were. As you, as you were, folks. Okay, so if I, if I learn anything, you know, I love the style of, of presentations you both bring. I, I see you screen share a lot. And I do see you use these tools all the time and you use them strategically when you need to. So it's not overdoing the zooming and it's not overdoing the drawing. And in Hugo's case, hopefully you're stuck at 1920 for the rest of the presentation. <laughs> uh, but uh, for me, uh, I use a lot of video in in, uh, in my presentations and a lot of my work, uh, you know, involves also screen sharing. And so sometimes I do need to share software. Primarily use my video to to do video effects and and share movies and, and share clips. But I do like what you're thinking. So if I got this right, I need Zoom it right, and I need some David skills in here right, and I also need you know an, uh, the 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 noon utility, the twelve noon. Sorry, I missed that. It was twelve thirty one p.m. <laughs> <laughs> A display changer. So so if I if so if I've done this well, I need to uh, also incorporate one thing. So I've put, I've moved my mouse in here and I just wanted to show one tool that I use, which is called the mouse highlight highlighter. So if you're not spotlighting, I do find sometimes that the, the mouse highlighter is a great way for folks to follow there. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have the fancy zoom it follow uh, in there and I'll just move this so that you know, we don't block Hugo in here. But a lot of times I do use OBS and I have this, uh, here we go. Uh, I do have, uh, I do have to kind of zoom in on the controls. And so I am using OBS to create these effects where I could zoom and follow content, which, which was great, but I was missing those arrows. And so lately, uh, after what seems like, I don't know, a good eight months of persistence and trying, <laughs> hopefully I've got this right, David, hopefully I make you proud. You know, I finally figured out where I got this idea from. <laughs> and I also know whom to reach out to when I need there. And so this has been a great way for me to kind of talk and showcase and highlight some of the things I have learned. And last but not least, zoom into that and show folks exactly what they need to know. I'm gonna double right That's click awesome. out of that. So, great so combination. <laughs> so, so thank you, thank you. And one trick I'll tell you is, uh, I am using the mouse and I am using a stream deck, which leaves me with no more fingers uh, to use a keyboard. So one tip uh, I'd leave for Zoomit users is the double right click on your mouse is a great way to escape out of the uh, uh, sequence that Zoomit has where you can draw. So that, that actually works for me. And that's how I was able to escape out of that. Uh, otherwise it, it will you know, it'd be a whole bunch of uh, things going on here <laughs> to produce that. 
All right, folks. By the that's way, it for... sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was gonna just going to say that the shortcut keys uh, for Zoom it. When you launch Zoom it, it actually lists you all the keys. So this is not like a secret decoder ring. You know, only a, a you know a, a selected people can know those shortcut keys. It's actually built into <laughs> Zoom it. Yeah, <laughs> and you can remap them if you're not loving Control Two. Yeah. You can <laughs> you can change them to what you want, but. The shortcut, the G keys in the, the stream deck are worth the Are price you telling admission. me this information is not in help? <laughs> 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 Guys, this was amazing. Thank you for giving me, you know, th this evening, sharing the ways you kind of work. Hopefully folks adopt and embrace some of these ways in their own work so that they can also take their presentations to the next level. Thank you for having thanks us. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thanks for inviting All us. All right. So I'm going to say bye to these guys uh, as we wrap it up here. So hopefully these three, three, three tips help you. You can definitely use the, the 12 noon software, which allows you to change your resolution on the fly. You can also look at the Zoom It utility, which is another great way uh, of, of drawing and, and accentuating software as you walk people through that. And last but not least, if you want to take it to a whole nother level, you could do this. I could, you could use OBS and screen share and use all of those tools and take it to a whole nother level. Thanks for watching.